Hi everyone, in this video we are going to go through the part two questions, uh, that's 25 through 31 from the August 2019 Regents exam. All right, 25, in parallelogram A, B, C, D shown below, we have angle DAC is 98 degrees and ACD is 36 degrees. We are looking to figure out what the measure of angle B is. Okay, so when we are looking at um, any problem where you're trying to find angle measurements, don't worry if you can't find angle B in one step. Sometimes you have to do something first in order to work your way there. So what I'm going to do first is I see that I have a triangle here and that every triangle has a sum, an interior angle sum of 180. So that makes this angle 46. And then if we have a parallelogram, opposite angles in a parallelogram are 40, are equal to each other, so B is 46. So let's put all that information together. The measure of angle B is equal to 46 degrees because, and let's think about the two facts we used. Um, and actually, you know what, let's actually say their angle D is 46 because we found that first. The measure of angle D is 46 degrees because um, a triangle has an interior angle sum of 180 degrees. And then we can say our answer, the measure of angle B is 46 because opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. And that is the answer to our first part two question. So remember that since it's part two, um, you have two points here. So if you only did half, you can expect to get one out of two points. All right, 26, an airplane took off at a constant angle of elevation. After it traveled 25 miles, it reached an altitude of five miles. To the nearest 10th degree, what is the angle of elevation? So I'm gonna put an X in here. This is our angle of elevation. And we're gonna use Sokotoa. So the opposite side is the five. The adjacent is this blank piece. And the hypotenuse is the 25. This is gonna be a problem that uses sine because the opposite side has something written on it. And the hypotenuse side has something written on it. So the sine of x is equal to 5 over 25. When you're solving for an angle, this is an inverse operation. So we are going to use the inverse button in our calculator. So I'm going to hit the second button, then sine. 5 over 25. And we are going to now round this to the nearest tenth of a degree, so 11.5 degrees. All right, for number 27, on the set of axes below, triangle ABC is congruent to DEF. Describe a sequence of rigid motions that maps ABC onto DEF. So just so you know, a sequence can be one or more rigid motions. And sometimes on these questions, there are multiple correct answers. So I'm just going to give an example of one, but there, there's certainly more. So the first thing I'm going to start with is recognizing that ABC is the pre-image and DEF is the image. I don't have the prime symbols here, but the way I read the question that we're mapping ABC onto DEF, that tells me ABC is the pre-image. First thing I notice is that there's some sort of flip in here. So I'm going to flip ABC over the Y axis so that it looks like this. And then I notice I'm getting close and it looks like maybe just one more flip is happening. So I have to figure out where that flip is and it's at this line right here. This line is an equal distance between the pre-image and image now and that's Y equals 2. So I'm going to say that first it was a reflection over the y-axis and then a reflection over y equals 2. Keep in mind any horizontal line has y equals as its equation. 
Okay, number 28. The vertices of triangle ABC have these coordinates. Determine and state the area of triangle ABC and the use of the axes is optional. I always plot these anytime it's area, even if it says it's optional. And you can see I've already gone ahead and done that on my coordinate plane. So this problem is a little unique compared to most of the ones the regions asks about with area. Um, and that it's giving us something that we could easily draw the height for. So I can imagine that this is the height or the altitude of the triangle. I can see that they're perpendicular. So that means I could just do area is one half base times height, the area formula for a triangle. The base is 12, the height is five, and I get that my area is 30 units squared. Let's say just for um, the sake of making sure we know what to do if you get something different, let's say that you didn't know how to draw the height down and you wanted a like sure, like foolproof way. What you could do is basically box the shape in, like draw a rectangle around it, find the area of the rectangle, find the area of these surrounding triangles, subtract them, and then you'll get that same area of 30. So that's what you would do if you cannot draw the height easily. Number 29, using the construction below, state the degree measure of angle CAD and explain why. This is kind of a unique question as well because in this problem, we're not asked to do the construction. It's done for us. Um, and we just have to figure out how big the angle measure is. So it's asking for the angle or the degree measure of angle CAD. So we have to look closely here and to kind of see like, what can we tell about this picture? And it looks to me that this is going to be an equilateral triangle. I can tell that by the intersection of these arcs here that that makes those sides congruent and that basically these arcs were used for both A and B, like go through A and B. So if you have an equilateral triangle, okay, so imagine this for a second, all of the angles are 60. But we can tell through this that we have an angle bisector, so that's going to make this angle 30. So I'm going to write that... Um, triangle CAD, uh, sorry, angle, triangle CAB is an equilateral triangle so angle CAB equals 60 degrees. Since the angle is being bisected The measure of angle CAD is equal to 30 degrees, basically having that. Number 30, we are given a diagram of circle K, a secant and a tangent, and we're given some value or one value here that the measure of arc LZ is 56 and we wanna find the measure of angle P. Well, the rule when you're looking for one of these angles that's formed by tangent and secant is basically um, subtract the two arcs and divide by two. I can see that the closer arc is 56. I just can't see what this arc is. So if you're having trouble figuring out what arcs to pick, by the way, let's start with that. Take the angle you're looking for, so in this case P, and make it really big. Now look at your picture and there should be two arcs in there. One is this first pink scribbly one and the other is the one of 56. I want to figure out what that pink scribbly arc is. So I know that EL is a diameter that splits a circle in half. So I know the bottom half of this circle must be 180 degrees. So if we already have a 56, I know this has to be 124. Now I can apply the formula. So 124 minus 56 divide by 2, and I get that angle P is 34 degrees. Okay, our last part two question. A large water basin is in the shape of a right cylinder. The inside of the basin has a diameter of 8 and a quarter feet and a height of 3. 
determine in state to the nearest cubic foot the number of cubic feet of water that it will take to fill the basin to a level one half feet or one half foot from the top. So I see automatically cylinder here and I'm thinking this has got to be a volume question. So I'm going to go to my reference sheet. That's going to be at the back of your test booklet. And I'm going to copy down the volume formula for the cylinder, which is pi r squared h. All right, so now when I take a look at this, um, I'm going to see what I can plug in here. And I can see that the height is three. And that basically um, the radius is 8.25 divided by two. So this is 4.125. And actually, I'm going to go back and make a change for a second. We'll talk about why this is. So we're given that the diameter is 8 and a quarter. Have that. My radius is 4.125. We're given that the height is 3. But if we read all the way to the end of the question, it says that we want it to be filled, that's the height, half a foot from the top. So we actually want to change out this height. That's how big the initial water basin is. We only want it to be 2.5 high though. So it's like I'm doing 3, point, uh, 3 minus 0.5. Now let's put this in our calculator. So I have pi 4.125 squared times 2.5 and that gives me 133.6. So to the nearest cubic foot, nearest whole number, I get 134. Okay, so again, notice the little trick in that question that you had to subtract out one half or 0.5 from the height. Okay, go to the next video in this playlist. You'll see the answers to 32 through 35, which is the part three and four questions.